Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. In today's video of the Bank Bandit series, I should be covering the I-35 Bandit. I hope you enjoy. I-35 or Interstate 35 begins in Laredo, Texas and travels north, ending in Minnesota. Covering a 503 mile distance in Texas alone, the I-35 would aid in one serial Bank Bandit's 10 year spree. Hitting the authorities' radar in 2003, the I-35 Bandit was originally named the ZZ Bandit because of his fake facial hair disguises. His appearance mirrored that of lead singer Billy Gibbons of the band ZZ Top. Mind you, one of the beards also made him look like Santa Claus. Described by the FBI as being armed and dangerous, the I-35 Bandit definitely lived up to his nickname. He is believed to have successfully robbed 23 banks between 2003 and October the 31st, 2013. Being described as a white or Hispanic male, aged between 40 and 50 and being around 5 foot 6. He was showcased as being athletic as camera shots show him effortlessly vaulting a telecounter during one of the bank robberies whilst holding a pistol. Given the I-35 nickname, based on bank locations being in small Texan town banks, the I-35 bandit seemed to have luck on his side. The FBI speculation was that the bandit was himself Texan. The vast majority of the banks he targeted were in remote parts of Texas, and the bandit was believed to have done some reconnaissance on each leading up to the robberies. The disguises varied, some being false facial hair and some being masks, but they did follow a similar pattern, a hat or wig, sunglasses and face coverings were all utilised to prevent identification. The combination worked well for the I-35 bandit. I couldn't find any details on the earlier robberies attributed to the I-35 bandit. But some of the robberies clearly underline the bandit's MO. The getaway vehicles were fitted with stolen plates. Plus they were commonly either rental vehicles or stolen vehicles. The FBI pointed out the I-35 bandit's speed and boldness during the robberies he occasionally left his getaway car's engine running. He flaunted the handgun and took over the bank, raiding every teledraw. Sometimes he would even empty out the bank vault, which is very unusual for bank robbers. Robbery over and the bandit would return to the I-35 and flee, blending in with other traffic. No wonder he'd been getting away with bank robberies for so long. On October the 31st of 2013, a bank robbery in Schwertner, Texas, had the bandit making off with a fortune. In minutes he made off with $100,000, having brandished a handgun during the commission of the crime and stating, I want all your money and I don't just want the money in the drawers. The I-35 bandit wanted to enter the vault. This explains the huge sum that was stolen. An eyewitness remembered the silver four-door getaway car used in the crime. She also provided a suspect description. The lead, despite its concrete first-hand account, wouldn't immediately prove to be useful. That was until December of the same year. The FBI had known that they were dealing with someone who had been active for a while. It wasn't his first rodeo, so to speak. Bandit seemed like an expert when it came to picking the ideal target and then executing the plan weeks later. However, when it came to using technology, his expertise wasn't up to scratch. The Bandit's lack of concern likely came from his years of avoiding the consequences for his actions. His emboldened behaviour likely grew over the years. He'd been unstoppable up until December 2013. A simple Google search of the October bank robbery 
would prove to be the I-35 bandit's undoing. Investigators traced the IP address of the searcher. The residence was situated in Fort Worth, Texas. The I-35 runs right through the city. It's a direct route down to the known bank robbery locations. The home resident was identified as Jesse Gamboa, age 51 at the time. Upon further investigating Gamboa, authorities uncovered a conviction for a 1986 bank robbery out of Dallas. The similarities between Gamboa and the I-35 bandit continued to be lifted as the FBI inspected Gamboa's financial records. His expenses showed a storage unit under his own name. Upon searching the storage unit, they found over $100,000, which was determined later on to be from four separate bank robberies, along with over $100,000 worth of musical equipment. Not only did they find money and musical equipment, but they also found evidence which tied Gamboa to the Halloween robbery this being the handgun and the bag taken into the bank. For the final suspected robbery, the assumption is that Gamboa travelled south on I-35 and was looking for a bank that he'd scoped out previously. He had purchased fuel in Temple, Texas an hour beforehand and video footage showcased him at the scene. Gamboa then journeyed 20 miles further south, down I-35, his cell phone pinged only seven miles away from the bank in Jarrell, Texas, further incriminating him. The city where Gamboa's phone pinged runs parallel to Interstate 35. After the robbery, Gamboa is suspected to have driven back north, up I-35, and laid low in Oklahoma. Gamboa spent the takings, estimated to be over a million dollars on funding a lavish lifestyle consisting of travelling, football games and prostitution. Gamboa was charged with four counts of bank robbery, the ones where evidence was conclusive to tie him in. With little information out there on the status of the remaining cases, the true scope of the I-35 bandits robbery shall likely never be known unless Gamboa confesses. Since this case took place in Texas, and he's considered a violent offender, it's highly plausible that Jesse Gamboa received a long prison sentence. The only updates that I could find relate to numerous appeals, one of them being filed in 2019. It was denied. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to give me your thoughts on the i-35 bandit as always thanks for watching